ones crop up, and yep, they're going to be taking away the same champions to start this one off, of course, and we'll see the Annie lock in. So now we get to see what Giants want to answer with. The Sejuani makes a lot of sense. That is, of course, what we figured they wanted, but what do they take next? Looks like it's going to be a Sivir. Okay, so that's just Fadri, not really a takeaway from Freeze. He has played it a few times, but it's not been one of his go-to picks normally with this Sivir. Obviously, any Sivir is a terrible, oh well, a, a tough composition to play against because you got so much engage coming in. So, not a bad pick from Giants. Already a good start. I like Sejuani in the jungle. I think she's one of the strongest junglers here on 5.5. Even though Frederick hasn't looked too good lately, giving him one of these big tanks, it means in the late game, he's going to have a massive impact. There's the Maokai then. Yeah, I think that's kind of a no-brainer there. Soren is going to go ahead and quickly lock in the Ari as well. When he can get rolling, Soren definitely gets a little bit scary. This is why he commands those Cassiopeia respect bands. So, they're kind of taking away Pepinero's carries in the mid lane with LeBlanc being banned, with Twist of Fate being banned, and then taking Ari fairly early here. I wonder what Pepinero's going to lock in because again, it's so often about him, what he can do. If he goes for like Ezreal mid lane, that's not really a champion you carry on from the laning phase. You gotta get to the mid game and they keep swapping the around. Here with swap. two, two but also, that's Sejuani pick ah, here. Ah, it's Diana. Okay, that's fine. That's a good pickup. I like that. It is. And a very easy lane to gank, though, from the Cobra Angle was if they get an early aggressive jungle here on Airwax. They can really shut down Diana in the laning phase. But Sejuani as well is the only champion Airwax has played more than more than once outside of Java. So it is a bit of a takeaway from him. Yeah. I think but the way this Giants comp is shaping up. That's an all-in composition. They definitely have a lot of ways to chase yeah. you down, but not a lot of ways to get away. Maybe the Sivir ulti. Well, you don't want to use Civil Ulti to disengage when you have Leona, when you have Diana. I mean, yeah. that's kind of ruining the purpose of your comp. It's, yeah, you might as well. This is an all-in dive onto the back line of Copenhagen Wolves, and it's most likely going to be Freeze that's the target every time, because the Ari is going to jump around, obviously. So if Freeze goes Draven here with very low amount of peel, except for the Nunu, he's going to be the target in every single team fight for Giants. Talk about trying to protect your AD carry. If he does lock in this Draven, no one eight escapes against a team like Giants is cooking up. Well, it's a risky one. It is from, very from risky. Walls. It takes some cojones to try to yeah. lock that in. Let's see if they do. That's what they're talking about. I, think. Uh, yeah, I like okay. this more. It's a little safer. Get a bit more mobility. At least get the dash. A bit more tankiness as well from that Graves. Because, again, you know you're going to be the target every time. And when you're against Diana as well, you can go for Graves because she's going to dive in as an AP mage. Your burst will count for quite a lot. Yes, he's going to go hourglass early, but that's about it in terms of her armor. So you will do a lot of damage to her. Graves' problem here in this patch is if there's double tank, his burst does nothing in the mid to late game. But against the Diana, he will be able to at least blow her up. So, what are we just going to get his hands on the Hecarim this time around? We'll see how he does against Young Buck, or if they even opt for the standard lanes. I do like Hecarim um, for Giants. It's one of those champions where it is still worth it to gank for Whirlip, get him ahead in the laning phase, get him to an early Trinity Force, and let him become a bit of a split-pushing threat, as long as he can use those teleports correctly. And also, what Giants are doing, it, this is another team, Copenhagen Wolves and, and Giants, both struggle in the mid-game, mid to late game, in terms of decision-making, like how to push our lead. Giants' composition is so simply made. Are we guys, are, are we ready to fight? Okay, here's Copenhagen Wolves, let's just blow everything we have. And there's no way we're not going to get the right engage, or at least some sort of engage on the Wolves. Because there's so many options, Hecarim ulti, Sejuani ulti, Leona ulti. I mean, there are so Not many of ways of starting yes. that fight. So as long as the Copenhagen Wolves walk into them around an objective, Giants will get the fight they need, or should at least be able to. And then it's just about, can they execute it properly? Can yeah. they you They've know, got pick the, the right target? They've got the comp to try to run over the Wolves. Let's see if they can do it here. Why don't you guys at home tell us what you think. Can the Copenhagen Wolves clinch their final seat at the spring playoffs or not? Tweet us at LOL Esports with the hashtag CWWin or GIA win. We'll see what you think once we're loaded onto the Rift. But for now, we're getting close to the end of the regular season here. The crowd's getting hyped up and we're loading onto the Rift. Yes, we are Pyra and we have Pepinero on a... Uh Different champion from what we normally see. Still a champion where he can carry. And Whirlip too. This is yeah, his first Whirlip as well. That's true. See Whirlip what he can do with it. Here. But Diana for Pepe Nero. If they manage to make sure he doesn't die early on to, uh, let's say, gang from Airwax and get him to that level 6 point with a Sejuani, you have a fantastic way of just jumping on Sora in the lane, shutting down. Diana is a fantastic pick when she gets a lead. 
She does not work very well if you start falling behind, especially not against double tank, because then she doesn't really have any targets unless she, she gets on to Soren or Freeze in the late game, which obviously is going to be the target for Paper Nero. Diana doesn't really kill the tanks too well. Oh, that's a fight. It's poked with that the was, umbrella. That was a boring fight. It was over very quickly. Yeah. Oh, there's a dance party up in the river. Is that a dance party or...? I'm not really sure what that was. Let's pretend we didn't see it. All right, so no uh, early item for Whirly, but we have seen Hecarim in place do is just start the flask, do Raptor, go back and get like a cloth arm or something. First, oh, unlimited winning. <laughs> winning out, he got a bit of extra gold as well. But no uh, fancy study for Whirly. He can still do a camp and recall and TP into lane. But won't really get an item advantage, only that level 2 from it. And it looks like he's going to do the crooks. Yeah, we got the standard lanes so far. A couple of wards placed around, but it's been all quiet apart from that. Freeze trying to be sneaky in this forward brush. He's going to back away from it now. And I really want to see how Airwax is going to play the team fights. We haven't seen him play Nuno before. It was banned yesterday, despite him never really playing it in the LCS and always focused on these hard engage junglers. This is obviously very different. Now it's about peeling and kiting for him. And it's going to be tough to pull off a good ulti because there's so many guys who's going to try and stop uh -oh. him with all the CC and oh, Unlimited. Oh, that's nice a good stun. Nice stun. More gold as well. He's getting some stacks in the bank. He's going to take a boomerang blade to the face, though. Still well worth it to grab that extra gold to start this one off. We've got our 2v2 in the bottom side. Meanwhile, in the mid, Soren at the narrow. Let's see how this one goes. You mentioned Diana, not so good from behind. Let's yeah. see what Peppy's able to make with it. And obviously her laning phase, while she can farm pretty well, Getting a kill pre-6 should never happen if you're playing Diana. Like, that shouldn't be possible because you don't really have the ability to do it. And you're going to have to, like, flash into the enemy face to try and kill them. And that's super risky if the enemy jungler is nearby because you have no way out. She's a bit of a one-way ticket. You go in, you don't go out. Rydal is taking a lot of yeah. damage in this bot lane right now. Giants came a bit late because Unlimited stunned them over here after he placed the ward as well. So Freeze got a bit of a push going. And... Kobalang of all is taking full control of the lane. This has really been a problem for Giants in the past. The bottom lane, in terms of the 2v2 laning, tends to not do well. And we have seen other teams, even in losing matchups, take the 2v2 and, and do well against them. Freeze on Unlimited has been one of the best dual lanes we have here in Europe. Especially if you look at the last like five weeks or so. They won't have any problems as a Graves any lane, or shouldn't have at least, in this bottom lane, unless they get caught by Rydal. If he can manage to land the engage Unlimited here, it's going to be the target. Yeah, Rydal is going to move on to Unlimited. Exhaust is down, but this could be first blood. He's healed, but he's ignited as well. Looks like that's going to save his life thanks to a biscuit. He's going to stick around for a moment yet. Frederick working on the blue buff, not coming to help out with that one, but Audrey and Rydal were perfectly fine with it. And this is why people like Leona into Annie. You can engage so easy on this immobile support, and she's very squishy early on. Well, Leona, of course, can tank up some of the damage. So nice engage. Blowing that flash is important. It means Frederick can now come down for a gank. Rydal's trying and, to flank. And Rydal can so easily set it up on Unlimited. You can even just flash stun him. Even E flash if you want. Start the animation first, flash after, and Unlimited shouldn't be able to react with no flash. Well, Unlimited's got no summoners right now, and Freeze doesn't have the heal. So if they do decide to swap target or to change targets onto him again, it's going to be a little bit troublesome for that Copenhagen Bulls bot lane. Everything else has been a little bit more quiet. You do see Whirlit pushing in on the top side against Young Buck. Rydal, however, back at the bottom, is going to get stunned up by Unlimited. Just trying to keep him pushed back. Farm had traded a little bit back and forth. So far, Freeze is getting a slightly better end of it. Here we are, back to the top lane. Young Buck is just having to deal with this very aggressive pony. Pushing him back, but he's still taking some damage. We will be getting free farm, both top lane. And obviously, Hecarim want to rush towards that Trinity Force, early home guards as well. We've seen Huni multiple times now really carry games on the top lane Hecarim. We've seen it in other regions, Korea, China, often. Even NA obviously pulled it out a few times. It is a fantastic pick, again, as long as you don't fall behind. That really is the problem for Giants' composition. When you have this much engage, if you start falling behind and you're not strong enough to take the fight, even though you can engage, you don't really have anything you do. You just sit back and you just slowly wait for Wolves to take all your objectives. So Hecarim and Diana, two champions who does not want to fall behind, because they are very all-in focused. I mean, the Copenhagen Wolves, as long as they keep it even, at least here in the early game, and then towards the mid-game, start creating some picks with the Annie, with the Ari here, see if they can get a lead over Giants. That's the plan for these Wolves. Remember, they're playing for quite a bit here. Freeze dodging away right after Rydal goes in with the Zenith Blade. If the Wolves can win this one, they do secure their spot in the spring playoffs. Got a lot to play for, and so do the Giants. It really means a lot.
Frederick going to be able to back away before Airwax does spot him. Moves on into his jungle. Let's see what he can grab here. Place a few awards at least. One behind the red buff right there. No pink though being put down. So just deep vision to try and spot Frederick, who's not level 6 yet on this Sejuani, so you're not too scared of him. Just let him sit back and farm, get the information. And you can see Pep and error here. That is full lane focus. Triple Thorn's ring. Just want to do as well as he can in the laning phase. Guess oh, he's six. Six. Well, yeah. Oh, he's going in. Yeah. Okay, there we go. There's the Lunar Rush and Soren. Didn't take too much damage. He's able to return some fire. Ja dashing in again, Pepinero. He's going to go for it, but there's the Spirit Rush. Pepe is ignited. Both mid laners are oh, actually. Pepinero, oh, he's going way low. But he's able to stay alive. There's the first oh. Carbon Deception. Not enough. And we don't have first blood yet. Uh, only hit the first one that cuted. Didn't get it on the return. Alex now in this lane to push it in. Frederick is nearby, but Pepinero won't really be able to help a whole lot. Staying around for the farm. Good little fight in the mid lane. Flash blown should mean another setup for the wolves in that mid lane on Pepinero. One Sorn has ulti again. It was a very, very close call for both those mid laners. A lot of summoners blown. Now Frederick looking to start up this dragon. He knows that Sorn's not around. He doesn't know where Arawak is. Arawak needs to check this one. He should walk down and make sure this does not happen. Because it's not even like the bottom lane is in a massive advantage. No, they're fairly even. There's no mid laners. Okay, Arawak should be walking down. He might. Oh. Fall into a trap, but he wants to clear the ward instead of checking that dragon here. But if he walks in, he's gonna get it. Oh, but he just walked right by it, didn't get close enough. And now he's back. Oh, for the wolves. Wah, wah. That was a free dragon. When your Giants mid laner really is even that. back in base and you get a free dragon, that should never happen. Bit of a mistake from the Cobaning wolves early on here, giving that dragon over. They did, of course, see. The when it was down. taken, so they got the time on it. That's still a bit of a disadvantage. Oh. And early home guards. Very early home guards for Whirlup. He is going to the races. Trying to get back to lane to deal with Young Buck. About even in farm up at the top. We haven't talked too much about it. Just been shoved back and forth. However, Young Buck did get forced onto the double door and start. Whirlup arrives just in time for the farm to come to him. Mm. He's going to be able to eat and run, but stay in one place at the same time. I'm not a fan of what Pepinero is building at the moment. I don't feel like you need cooldown reduction that much on Diana, because you're getting your reset on your ulti anyway, so your combo is like Q, ulti, ulti, and your Q as well at level level 9 when it's max rank is already going to be down to around 5.5 seconds cooldown, and that should be enough for you, honestly. So this means he's going to delay his scepter, He's going to delay his magic resist. He's obviously also going to delay his hourglass coming in for him. So he's going to delay these tanky items, which is what Diana needs when she's diving that back line. Because yes, you have some good damage from it, but you're not really that tanky just from being Diana, because you are an AP mage after all. Right, and those, those triple darns aren't going to so, help out the later the game goes too. So Pepe will grab his blue buff, but it is a little troubling for him. Let's take a look at that fan vote right now. Wow. Giants fans coming out in force here. 84% saying yeah. they're going to win this game. Representing Spain, of course. All five serious, players. Serious. All right, this confidence. is a game we talked about. No flash for Pepinero here in the mid lane, but he is going to be able to get back to his tower. I want to see what he's going to build. Oh, Obviously, Morel on gone first, and Unlimited he has already flashed away, but there's a lot of magic damage on the side of Kobanek. Why don't just rush that Abyssal Scepter, go Hourglass after, and suddenly the burst from Wolves can be neglected fairly easily just by popping that out last minute going and already having that magic resist from the Abyssal Scepter. But I assume he's going to go more real Normicon first with this first item. I think that's a fairly safe bet. Now, Frederick's been hanging out between the mid and the bottom right now. He's going to go ahead and clear a pink out, place a ward down of his own, trying to provide some pressure for Giants. It's a very even game so far to start. The one dragon is really what's separating these two teams. Whirlup is going to roam in the general direction of the Skellow Crab. Frederick going to clear out a ward as well, so I don't know this one's happening, but it's really just Giants trying to grab the vision game for themselves right now as the lanes play out fairly standard. Yeah, double ping ward on the top side of the map, meaning they can set up a play around Youngbug. It's a very easy roam now from this mid lane here. Both entrances has been covered. Frederick is sitting here waiting for Soren. Oh, oh! Didn't get the stun. Dash is just out of the tail end of it, and he gets the slowdown, but still not quite enough. Rydal now forced to run away. As walks in unlimited, we're at his tail. Frederick's there to back him up. Skull Crab now being cleared out in Dragon Side. Of course, Copenhagen Wolves have nothing to 
take here as the dragon was, of course, pilfered quite a while ago. Yeah, just want some uh, control on the bottom side because they already lost the top side. If you look at their wards, Wolves are putting all the focus down towards Freeze. Where Giants want to try and snowball this Hecarim up here. Again, Pippin Arrow has a very easy way roaming to the top and we know he likes to do it. You can either take the route behind the Baron or you can walk straight in towards the blue buff of Copenhagen Wolves and there's a smaller chance than normal, normally of a ward spotting him with these two pinks. They gotta use them though. Otherwise, Airways can just walk in and clear them out. This fairly aggressive pink ward won't really pay off for Giants. I'm not getting anything for it just yet. Let's see what they can make do. Starting to ramp up in the atoms. Everyone's sitting on their ultimates now, but it's just still continuing to draw out the laning phase. Two minutes on the next dragon. We'll see what happens with that as Wolves have invested quite a lot of this vision game in the bottom side, as you said, but to be careful not to get chunked out too hard. Now the mid tower is being fired down by Frederick and Pepinero. How much damage can they do before Soren arrives? It looks like not too much. Small, uh, small wins here for Giants with the dragon. A bit of damage on the tower as well. They're going to set up for another gang on Soren. There's no ulti for Frederick yet. Same thing we said for Soren though. If Pepinero can jump onto him, he might force a flash. Check close. Oh, and in comes the Sejuani, but that is a lot of return damage. Pepe wasn't able to follow through as quickly. Soren gets the better of that in a 1v2. But it's the same again, though. Just small fights all around. No real advantage gain for anyone. We haven't seen TP plays yet from Whirlip. No roams either from the mid lane, from any, or from either of the two mid laners. And obviously Airways and Nuno is just trying to get some wards down, farm up, get his Cinder hole completed. It is already done from Frederick. We're going to have to go into the mid game. I think Both we are. teams normally struggle. It's going to be pretty exciting now there's no real advantage for anyone. Yeah, you know, in, in a number of Giants games, they did do quite well in the early game. And of course, things kind of fell apart. When they've been dead even, it's pretty much been the same story. So I'm curious to see if they can, you know, as we said on the desk, really uh, evolve in this particular game. They, it means a lot to them to try and stay alive and not put themselves in the auto-relegation territory to be able to still fight for their LCS lives. They've said it all split that that's what they want to do. Well, now it's time to put their money where the mouths are. It is for sure. Obviously, if they do lose here, it's not over yet. MYM, if they lose to, to Rocket, we're going to have the tiebreaker now. Here's the first TP. Oh, yep, Soren's going to try to dodge out. Goes right back in. Whirlib is going to be caught up by the charm. Airwalks and Pepinero dueling it out. Absolute Zero is on. Meanwhile, down to the bottom. This Glacial Prison is going to be a first blood going over to Frederick. And Copenhagen Wolves didn't get anything on the top side. The Dragon is live again. Giants are moving there. A lot of ult is being blown in the fight beforehand. So this should be another Dragon now for Giants. Nice little setup on the Annie. Not a whole lot you can do unless you flash the first engage. Yeah, we'll find Whirly. So long as he is still. Snare yeah, him, get away. Oh. should get him. They got the slowdown, twisted advance, a lot of flashes burn. They really want to take down Whirly. They should be able to do it. And it goes over to Airwalks, but they're going to pay for it with another dragon as that does get secured up by Giants. Two to them now. And a free farming Diana in the mid lane. Nice little play in the bottom lane from Giants. Really, if you, look at two, if you look at the two comms and the mid game, so Giants is running a bit of a fight composition, but you have so many ways of engaging that you don't necessarily need to set up an objective before, and you can just kind of walk in there, and if you see the opportunity, you engage. Obviously, it's always best to have vision control, but Giants can play around it just because they have so much engage on their side. With Copenhagen, also is going to be a lot more about either catching someone off guard with the, with the Annie, or otherwise, you just kite around. You kite back with Nona, you kite obviously with the Ari, then you land a charm and you single, target or single focus that one target with the Graves and Annie burst or Graves and Ari burst in this sense so it's going to be a lot of for the Copenhagen Wolves either catch out Giants otherwise kite 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 have them blow all these ultis to try and engage and then you can turn around after when you will be stronger yes indeed Pippin Arrow my friend what uh, are you yeah, building Pepe here Nash got himself first. back a suit huh. So Nashus is the item you go for if you want to be a split pushing threat, but you don't really build it as a first item. Pepe did do a lot of split pushing yesterday, though. He did. It's not like he's a stranger to that particular strategy. That was also on a twisted fate, however, where he had an ulti different. to still, you know, as a global. And Diana doesn't really have anything. He's not running teleport. And Kovanek and Wolves are not going to have anyone who's going to fight him in the split push anyway. 
They're just gonna have someone sitting on the tower defending, but I wanna see how he's gonna play with his Nashes here. Oh, Red'll stunned up. There's a lot of wolves surrounding him right now. Can he make his way out of this one? There is some help in the form of Frederick. There is gonna be the Glacial Prison, Absolute Zero going down. The Tibbers is also popped. In comes Pepinero, but Soren is still alive and kicking as he dashes around. Unlimited picks up Frederick Pepe going in, looking for Unlimited again as Audrey is now joining the fray. Oh, Spell Shield, heals, popped around, but the wolves, they have the upper hand here. They've already taken out two members, and Ice Ball goes down. Audrey trying to get a last kill, but he gets blown up. By Soren, in comes Pepinero, Luna Rush, and they're just trying to walk away from him now. But I don't think Airwalks is getting away. There's a charm. Maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, he Pepe got does get Airwalks, but he's going to go down in just a moment unless he can make the outplay. I don't think so. It's going to be all said and done. Three for one for the Wolves. Yeah, we saw the start there for the Wolves. They were the ones setting up a small trap, and as soon as Rydal engaged, they backed away, they kited around, they single out one target with the charm. That's how they got the kills. And Again, this build here from Pepe Nero, that's not made for straight up team fighting because you cannot rely on getting these three auto attacks off to proc your passive every time in a big team fight. There's going to be a lot of CC trying to lock you down, people kiting away from you. This is purely a split pushing build. So unless they can 1-3-1 from Giant's side, then this Nashes won't pay off on Pepe Nero and he could have spent it again. Scepter into Hourglass, which is the standard team fighting Diana build where you can really dive that back line. I feel like standard is definitely not what the Giants are about in this game. Opening and Wolves have built themselves up about a thousand gold advantage despite the two dragons, of course, going over. Remember, you know, they don't give any gold, but the buffs definitely should have translated into some fighting prowess. That time, just getting caught out one after another. Yeah, they caught Rydal first and then everyone kind of joined in. Came a bit of a melee after that, yeah. Somewhat, yeah. All right, Arrowx will get himself a ping ward. Has got two kills on this Nunu. Not always what you want. I mean, you want the now, There's also two on Soren. That's fine. In all fairness. That's but fine. But you're right, it definitely could have helped out Freeze quite a lot. Uh, Soren himself is going to be waiting here for Pepe Nero. Airwalk's coming around the side as well. Lands the charm. What can Pepe do? There's a lot of damage now. Absolute Zero coming in. Soren might actually go down here. He's taking away. Airwalk's will pick him up. Tried to give that one over, but it was a close call as Soren nearly got evaporated by Pepe. And we do see some good damage still from Pepe Nero. As, long, as soon as he can get the passive proc and now Freeze, he's in trouble. Yes, he is slowed down by the Sejuani. He tries to blow back some damage, but Audrey's going to pick him up anyways. And now it's tower time. We saw Unlimited try and go mid lane here. And Freeze were going to like bait the fight, but then he realized suddenly Frederick is nearby. Turns it around on the Sejuani. A kill and a tower for Giant. Still keeping it dead even in gold. They're still pushing up. Oh, now they're going to back away. Airwalks. Looking to intercept this one. He places the ward down. Rydal and Frederick are going to see that. Maybe they want to start the fight. Another ward's placed down by Rydal. And then they have to dash away. Arctic Assault in reverse. And now Whirlit might run into Youngbuck, who's looking to back to base, but he gets stopped. And now we've got a fight between these two top laners on our hands. A level advantage over to Youngbuck. Who's going to prevail in this one? So far, Youngbuck looks like he is getting the better of it. I think they'll back off now. Yeah. Hecarim is definitely not a tank killer either. So we're going to have to see Whirlit start joining the team. When they are trying to make plays around the mid lane or around the enemy jungle, that's where Whirlip needs to be able to jump that teleport. If he really wants to have an impact on the Hecarim, just fighting one-on-one -on -one against Jumbo is not going to do a whole lot for Giants. And they've both been farming fairly safely, honestly, in that lane. Jumbo obviously just going full tank, right? His story now completed. Got the little buff on 5.5. Fantastic early item now, 650 HP. Arox has really been able to move around quite a bit in this one, but Pepe's still a very dangerous threat on the side of Giants. They're looking to try to bait him into something, but he's a little too smart for that one. Something like that happened before. Rydal now, placing the ward in the river brush. Bottom side, Soren, Airwalks. No, they're not spotted here. Dragon's about half a minute away, so if they can get a pick here, that would certainly help. There's a charm on Pepe Nero as he crests and strikes in. In comes Rydal as well. Absolute zero. Not quite enough damage with the tank Nunu. Pepe Nero looks like he might get away, but now Rydal is the new target. He's going to be able to get out as well, but this will force a couple of backs with 13 seconds until the next dragon. Meanwhile, Youngbuck, Whirlib, can one of them outplay the other? Whirlib's just trying to get away from there. All the Giants have to back out, but they haven't hit the blue pill just yet. It's only in the mid lane Giants are doing well at the moment because Audrey is just sitting there against Freeze in a one-on-one. -on -one. But bottom lane, Coburn and Ghost, they keep getting some good fights. Forced to flash this time from Pepe Nero. Dragon is alive now. Obviously, the first two went over to Giants, so the Wolves have to be ready for it. No oh, ulti. Max range with the spell shield Remember on Audrey. Though, no ulti for Soren if there is a fight breaking out. Whirlip does have home guard TP. He could have waited in base here and trying to force one while Yombok were killing Tower, but it seems like he just want to return to lane. So now they do see him. They know there's no threat of his home guards, at least. 
if Copenhagen Wolves want to start this dragon, because they got some good wards around it. Notice how they have double pink behind it as well, because you know when there's a Hecarim, enemy team want to get deep wards in, and then TP in behind you just one-shot your carry. These two pink wards here is going to prevent that. Yeah, tower's not going to go down just yet, but the Wolves are still eyeballing it. Meanwhile, Pepinero's unopposed in this bottom side. Should be able to take that one with some relative ease. Copenhagen Wolves not feeling like they can start this just yet, but now they've got to know that Pepe is backing. No, he stops it. They're going to be all surrounding the Dragon Pit here, but they're hesitant to start. And Willow is recalling now. He's sitting in base with Tomas. He's There's coming in as well. They want to fight. They know it's going to happen. They're going to need a teleport in from Youngbuck, but he's not going just yet. Oh! oh my goodness, look at that damage as he manages to make his way out. Airwalks with the absolute zero. Can they still turn this fight? Willow finally gets the kill off on to Soren. And now Youngbuck, the rest of the Wolves, they've got to scatter. But let's look like Youngbuck's getting out of that one. Two quick kills for Giants Gaming. They lose Whirlip for it, but they're about to pick up Dragon number three to Fischio. And that was a very, very good engage from Giants. They saw the Wolves were splitting up. TP came in. What well, if just recalled? After you push it away, if you recalled, TP it in and you saw the damage. The first hit onto Sauron there, down to 50%. Let's see it again. The Wolves are kind of splitting up a little bit. Graves is on the other side of the Dragon now. The first damage from Hecarim onto an Ari here. Fantastic engage from Giants. Win the fight. Get the third Dragon as well. It's looking great. And as you mentioned with this Diana here, if you go for that Nashus, you got a 1-3-1, and Pepinero got the tower as well in the bottom lane. So, Giants really managed to split up Copenhagen Wolves, split push against them as well. And yeah, okay, they've died a few times, but they've always managed to get some objective, either tower or dragon. Yeah, this time around, the Giants are really, really bringing the noise against these Wolves. They've got themselves the first three dragons hard battled for. And... If you're Copenhagen Wolves in this situation, I mean, they've, they've had some serious troubles in this mid-game, yeah. but it just keeps continuing. Not looking too good, at least the last few fights for them, but they have created some good picks. But that last fight really showed as well how Giants composition, again, it's not one where you have to set up that objective of a minute in advance, you need 20 wards down. There were, there were two wards at the Dragon. One would even have been enough for Wolves to have a place to TP on with that home guard because the Wolves were splitting up. So just a very good job of Coordinating, now we go in, we have so much engage, and that's how we force it. They're gonna go for Yombok now. Speaking of engage, yep, they've got him, corralling him right into the trap. Vengeful Maelstrom's on, but I think this is only gonna be a matter of time. He burns his flash, but Whirlip's still on the chase. The rest of the Giants are there. What can Copenhagen Wolves really do with this, though? Because there's everybody up in the top side. They're gonna try to push you in the middle, but they're slow to react. And Giants, after securing that kill, should be pretty happy with it. But now this is gonna be a chance for Freeze and Airwalks to take down the mid tower. So the plan for Giants were, okay, bot lane is pushing in our advantage or in our favor. Mid lane, there's nobody from the wall, so we can go four man top, kill Yombok, and go back to mid lane and defend it. Problem was, it took a bit longer to kill Yombok, I think, and Graves and Nunu were nearby to take that mid tower. So in the end, unless Giants can take this top tower, which they should be able to, they just end up trading tower for kill, but we'll, we'll get it here. So they get tower and a kill, definitely in their favor. For just the mid tower here to Copenhagen Wolves. Nice yeah, and it was, it was close to gone anyway, so really it was yeah, just it was super the Wolves low. polishing just it off. Hits. Whirlip is going to be able to keep pushing this one out. He's going to be met again by Youngbuck, but he's definitely looking pretty good right now. Rydal and Frederick are in the area. See if they go and double up on this one. Audrey bringing the tail behind. The Wolves just aren't pushing anything really aggressively right now. And the Giants are taking full advantage of that fact. They are indeed. Well played so far. They have been really... The setup beforehand for that gank in the top lane is you just look at you look at every single lane and you know if you go four people top, there's gonna be a cross map objective in some way. So as long as you don't have anyone who can push a tower instantly in another lane, you can go for these four-man ganks. And that's basically what happened here. They were fine trading that mid tower for the top one and a kill. TP is not ready for Whirlip yet. It's gonna need about a minute's time. But then we're gonna see the next setup. And if the Wolves are not ready, if they don't spot that TP coming in and can stop him, I mean, you can have like the Nuno just walk in and snowball him. Just hit him one snowball while he's coming in with the home guards if you know where he's TPing to. Or the Maokai can do it and you kind of block him and he won't get to your back line, at least not with the home guard rush. That's a way for the Wolves to play around the Hecarim. But they need to see where he's TPing and they need to be together to stop it. One thing the Wolves are pretty solid at doing is making sure they stick together in situations. The problem is when they get flanked and they don't have enough numbers on their side because someone's backed, that can be troubling. 
Let's see what they can do here. Three members in the bottom side. Pepinero looks to take his blue once again. A lot of wards littered up in the top, mostly those of Giants Gaming. So we'll see if the Wolves are looking to try and bait a trap here. But no one's biting just yet. Oh, Pepe's coming in. He's going to be flanked by Rydal, dashes forward, and there are suddenly three Wolves on his tail. Ignite, the Tibbers is down, and they take him out. On the first time they set a trap in the bottom lane, they got in pipe and air a few times on it. We'll get a bot lane tower as well, unless Giants can force an engage. Freeze is not there, he's running around the mid lane. So no AD carry yet, they will be able to defend. Yeah, they just muscled their, the Wolves out of that position. But still, a nice pickup onto Pepinero. He thought he was safe, even with Rydal at his back. It just wasn't enough to really get him out of a bad situation. There wasn't any disengage there, and that is the weakness of the comp. Yeah, and we lost to just Pepinero going full damage on the and no defensive stats for him. So if he does dive in, in into a team fight, as long as the Copenhagen Wolves can just focus him, he dies super fast. But obviously, again, he's built to split push and not really 5-1-5, five five. and that's why we're going to see him go back in his 1-3-1 one, one setup, rely on the teleport, and him roaming from the side lane down once the dragon is spawning again. He does have a lot of damage. And the Giants are just really playing this vision clear game. They want to make sure that there's no chance Copenhagen Wolves can sneak in under their noses and grab a dragon out from under them. This would be their fourth if they do manage to secure the one coming up in just under a minute. At 26, almost 27 minutes into this game, Deficio Giants, they're controlling the objectives quite well. Yeah, first time they really set up for the dragon, but now it really matters because they got those three dragons and they know the wolves are forced to come and team fight them on it. You cannot just freely give a team five dragons. So this is a, such a nice setup. It gives a lot of options for Warlip to teleport in, and the wolves shouldn't be able to clear out even half the wards before the dragon is spawning. Yes, it's simply so as long, not enough time. As long as giants are there to defend these pinks they just placed, then it's uh, good. Just Rydal. is here on his own now. Pepinero just recalled, so they just gave the first ping ward over to Copenhagen Wolves. They need to be around them, force them to come in and face check you. Pepinero's not here. Yeah, and we're the best for Audrey. They use the absolute zero. He's the one targeted down, but he pops his heal. They don't have enough damage to finish him off or get even close. Frederick getting pushed away. This is a short timing window, but Wurlip, he has the Where's teleport the TV, available. They started the dragon. Oh, oh a massive glacial prison. Freeze, he's going to get dashed in. The Giants, they hit the on button. Wurlip takes down Freeze, and the Wolves are scattering in all directions. Soren trying to salvage the fight. Youngbuck in the front distracting, but I don't think he's going to live for long. Frederick, he manages to live. Two Wolves are down, and Giants gaming, they look like they can secure four dragons here, Deficio. What an engage from Frederick here. He got four man with his ult in, and TB came in after Freeze just melted instantly. Giants, they looked like they were kind of giving up around the area, allowing Copenhagen Wolves to clear the walls, but they came down once Pepinero arrived. Let's look. Look at Frederick here. Four guys from the Copenhagen Wolves, they group up. He throws the ulti. That is just beautiful. Oh, they just popped man. the Righteous Glory as well. Right on the skill of trying to. All the yeah. speeds. TB from were coming in. Pepinero's being locked down because, again, he's fairly squishy, but it just means the rest of Giants could do all the damage. Now they're chasing for more kills. Yeah, Airwalk, he was trying to make his great escape. In comes Youngbuck with the home guards. Airwalk still being chased down. Whirlip's going to be shoved back, but this has just gone all sorts of screwy. Giants Gaming still with a decent lead in this game. The four dragons to none. They've got themselves two and a half thousand gold, and they really were looking to go ham here. Soren, however, he's on the wrong side of a tower. He's going to have to take a couple of parting shots out of the way, and they see him. No way to chase him down, though. Didn't even see the setup there. Just the Giants were suddenly <laughs> chasing around in the jungle. And as you can see there on the tap, if Copenhagen Wolves win, they are in the playoffs. If they lose, however, they need elements to lose to Fnatic. Otherwise, we're going to have a tiebreaker, which of course will be played after our games today. So stay around. We might have a right, you fairly are. long night. We we might, like the, this game right now, I mean, this it means so much for the Giants because it puts them in a very good spot for avoiding the auto-relegation. If they manage to win this one and Meet Your Makers do not win their game, then they're automatically out of the 10th place spot. They keep themselves safe and can play to keep their LCS spot. Yes. And the worst thing that can happen to them is they have to play a tiebreaker for that same situation. So they really want to win this one here and prove that they do deserve to stay in the LCS. Right now, they're making a strong case for it. Oh yeah, they had some very good fights around these dragons here. Simply punishing the wolves every time for not being in position when the dragon spawned or at least set it up before and because we mentioned this like 20 minutes ago how the wolves they're set up they need to have vision on giants they need to be able to see where the teleport is coming they need to be able to see where the engage is coming from and then kite around it otherwise they can't really team fight properly and that's what's been happening they haven't 
had the proper setup on these dragons, and that's why Giants have been able to secure the last two at least and win the fights from them as well. And Obviously, a lot of kills on this Nuno as well is not going to help too much. Yeah, you got to look at where the gold's going on Copenhagen Wolves. When they do get the picks and they do get the skirmishes that they've wanted, a lot of it's going on to Airwalks. He's got, yes, 100% kill participation. That's fantastic. But when he has four of the kills, and between your two carries, you've only got two, they're falling a little bit behind in the item game, and it's starting to show. Yeah, Pepinero, I mean, this build here is very so aggressive. No, well... If it's effective though. So Nash's first is not normal, even as even in terms of like pure split pushing Diana. But it was smart of him in this case, just because you went down very early to a side lane and just sat and farmed, and that's where it's good to fast play these waves here, proc that passive every time. And he's not been punished in the team fights, at least the last few we have seen, because the rest of Giants are doing so much work. When Hegrim jumps in, you can't just ignore him either. So it's very hard for the Wolves to find that right target. We saw they tried to lock down Pepinero beforehand. He flashed out and simply just stayed back and didn't really do a whole lot, but there was enough just ta taking all the focus so that the rest of Giants could win the fight. But it's really been about them getting the right engaged, them getting good teleports, and Wolves having zero response every time. There's no chance for anyone to block the Hegrim when he comes in with that home guard because you don't even see where he's teleporting. And this has all been enabled by the fact that Giants are able to place the deep wards where they want. Maybe they're not protecting them everywhere, but there are just so many Giants wards this game, it's been difficult for Copenhagen Wolves to do anything unsighted. And Giants themselves have been able to sneak these objectives. It's led to them being in comfortable spots and then allowing them to dictate the pace of this game. Copenhagen Wolves on the back foot here just trying to push Giants away. Giants can just wait for that next dragon. Two minutes, you do the same thing. You ward up around this dragon, you protect it this time around here. You have Whirlip sitting in base with teleport. It's gonna be up before the fight and you do the same kind of engage. All you need to make sure is that you have minions pushing in the mid lane and you have a ward on the Baron because you don't want Cobalt and Wolves to try and trade it and like rush the Baron, take that one down while you do the dragon. So that's why Whirlip is now warding it here so you can see what's going on. And then all you do is you just sit around your walls around at the dragon. If the Wolves move to Baron, you send four guys over, you just leave your AD carry to solo that dragon on his own, and the four guys should be strong enough to stop the wolves from doing Baron, and suddenly you get dragon, you stop Baron, and you basically get everything. Yeah, simple game plan. We'll see if they're able to execute it. I mean, this is this has been Giants in a nutshell all season long, that they've, they've, they've had good game plans, they just haven't been able to always execute on them. But this time they've got a comp that can do one thing very well, and that's go in. They've been able to do oh, that, yes. and they have definitely come up ahead. Despite what the kill score may indicate, it looked very close there, but Giants, they're definitely controlling this pace. Going out the Skull of Crab, it's about a minute till the next Dragon is available as a couple more pink wards have been placed down all around that pit and a few more regular ones. Opening the Wolves need to stop this fifth Dragon. It will be lights out if they allow this to occur. And you can see how Giants place so many wards even outside the bushes just because it's hard for Copenhagen Wolves to guess where the ward is. Normally you sweep the bush and you're like, oh, we found the ward, great. But then there's just one on the other side of the wall which you, which you won't get. So there'll always be a ward for William to teleport on and get his engage here. Go up, stop the push from the Wolves, force them to the top side so they won't get in to play your wards around the Dragon. 20 seconds. Now all you gotta do is make sure Wolves don't rush that Baron Otherwise, you just force him into a team fight at the Dragon, and it's in your favor. Send down Audrey. Let him do the Dragon on his own. Worst case. Well, it didn't allow the Wolves to move where they wanted, just body blocking every move that they've attempted to make so far. Frederick right out in the front. The Wolves are going to start having flashbacks Whatever's here. Face. It looks like they're going to start this one. A couple of teleports coming in. Dragon's already been started. Can Giants get this and get out or get the fight? The oh, they move in. There goes Dragon number five. In comes the Hecarim. And they're just starting to melt the Wolves. They just don't have anything in the tank. Whirlip, he's going to give his life for this one. But it looks like Giants are going to be able to win this fight as Airwalks goes down to take Midnight, taking the last of his health bar as the rest of the Wolves are scattering again. We see them time and time again just going down. Three for one. Dragon traded. Giants, they're heading straight for Baron. They can get it, man. It's the same every single time Giants are here. First, they have all the wards set up. They can get perfect engages. Whirlip on this Hecarim has gotten so many good teleports in, and the Copenhagen Wolves simply cannot get the right team fights. They certainly cannot. They attempted to take that one at the last moment. Dragon comes in. Let's see how it all unfolded one more time. Yeah, okay. So Hecarim coming in down the bottom here. You can see him just on the side. He doesn't even get onto Freeze because of a nice dash, but he zones away the AD carries. Now only Soren is left to deal damage. Remember, the Wolves are running a double damage composition. So if you take away one, there's not enough damage from the other guy to take down four members. That's why also Giants can just clean it up. Atrahi on Sivir, untouched. Pepinero, untouched. 
Another fight for Giants. Five Dragons. Baron. They have everything they need to win this game and put all the pressure on Meteor Makers and say, if you don't beat Rocket, you are out of the LCS. Daunting prospect for Giants. They're definitely sitting comfortable right now. And 5,000 in the lead. I'll tell you, Pyra. Elements oh, yeah? right now sitting upstairs, and they're going crazy. Oh, I bet they are. Because this opens up for them to tie the Copenhagen goals if they beat Fnatic as well for that playoff spot. Cheering for Giants. It's been an interesting prospect for them as Rydal goes down unlimited. He's getting pretty low, but Peppy, that's a double kill over to Freeze. We might have spoken too soon. A couple of quick picks, and Baron's gone on the mid laner and support from Giants. Nice little pick from the Wolves. And Giants not able to set up anything. No teleport for Whirlip. He might try and push the bottom lane. Yeah, the Wolves are going to get a mid tower out of this, After though. pushing the top side, they're going to try and see if they can force Wolves back to defend. But they got four guys pushing in here. They might just get inhibitor and then go back after. Looks like that might be the plan right now. Frederick, he's not feeling like he can stop this. Not enough damage, really. On the bottom side, you do see one being taken by Audrey in the top. He's going to look to push on inhibitor turrets, but their mid inhibitor's already gone. The Wolves, they're not leaving just yet. Can Frederick stop some recalls here? Can oh, he stop the recalls? To. Inhibitor's going down to the bottom, though. That's one inhibitor. They got bottom lane tower as well here from Giants. He's still and going. Just look at Whirlip. He's coming. He's trying to collapse. Oh, my goodness. They're able to fire down with the Baron empowered minions. One Nexus turret's already gone. Freeze has gone back to base, but the rest of the Wolves, they don't have time to back. Audrey's going to move away. Is he in danger, however, of being collapsed on? Or is it going to be the Copenhagen Wolves that get moved on? A limited. Oh, so low as Whirlip is able to take him out. Now Audrey dashing away. Airwalks. There's the boomerang blade. A lot of damage to him as the collateral damage comes in from Freeze, but it just tickles Giants Gaming. It's hard to say who really came out ahead in that one, Deficio. Inhibitors traded across the board. Yeah, and uh, more towers as well for Giants, but this was a Copenhagen Wolves team who's been behind all game long. They got inhibitor down. So not a terrible trade for them on their side, but it's not over yet. 15 seconds on unlimited, buffed up minions, loads of cannons and everything. Giants pushing out, they want this mid tower as well. Should be able to secure it. They've got the Baron empowered minions and there's just no defense from Copenhagen Wolves. They've got to get back and stop the wave that's going to start Soren pushing no in the here. top. Soren's got no ulti, as you said. They're pushing away the super minions, smiting them down. Frederick able to just keep this push back, but they're running out of a couple minions of their own and they're going to back away as the Wolves have made a defense. Now it's Giants going to the bottom to try to push this one in. Got to stay together here. Audrey in the mid lane recalling. No reason to push it too far. Just take this wave in, recall, get ready for that dragon that's going to spawn soon again. Copenhagen will spot that pink ward. They will spot Audrey as well. We might get a fight and Giants are staying around. Gotta make sure Copenhagen Wolves don't have any vision of what is going to happen here. 38 minutes into the game. Giants have grabbed every single map objective and eight towers to boot. Copenhagen Wolves, they've got themselves five towers, but they did grab an inhibitor when it was traded. Let's see if they can make the defense here. It is not going to be easy. Now we've got super minions pushing here. Soren has to go back and defend. Remember, one of the Nexus turrets are gone. It's a 5v4, but there's no minions. So Giants here trying to push in. Yeah, no minions for them. But again, by just staying here, they make sure Copenhagen Wolves can move out of the base and move to that Dragon. Clear the one pink ward Giants already has. So they can just use this to wait for Dragon to respawn. Get number five again. Buff yourself up. By that time as well, Pepinero should have an hourglass. And then you can really start diving into these team fights. Every single team fight for him has been kind of staying back, trying to bait out some damage from the Wolves. And then he's allowed Whirlip instead to be one of the big carries to dive the back line on his own. And he's kind of been staying. So now they're going to go back. Let's see if there's an hourglass completed. There is for him. So next team fight, this Diana is going to be insanely strong. In comes Whirlib to clear out the super minions in the middle. They were neglecting that for a bit. They should be able to get this one pushed back, but Dragon's not quite a minute away. They're going to have to get in there very quickly, lest they give Copenhagen Wolves an opportunity to snag one back for themselves. Who They desperately need it. They cannot afford to give another aspect of the Dragon over to Giants Gaming. But can they afford to take the same fight they've taken out three times in a row, where that's, they lose that's every another, time? That's the million dollar question there. They have no way of getting that vision control, so they cannot use the comp correctly. They cannot spot the teleport. If you walk in and take another fight here, it might just end the exact same way as every other time, We're which is the why fountain. the Wolves are behind. He's sitting there, he's gonna wait. He's pinging on two wards behind the Wolves. Very easy ones for him to TP into. Look at that pink ward at the red buff as well. And then he's just going to look for Freeze, as always, try and shut him down. No peel for him. It's only that Nuno, but that's not going to do enough against the Hecarim. He's waiting. Where's the teleport going to be? 
Already started the dragon right now. It's going down to about half its health. Wolves need to do coming. something, do something now, but they've found something better. Unlimited after the Glacial Prison just absolutely goes down. Audrey is able to pick up that kill, and the dragon secured. Whirlip coming in for Sword, who's burning away, but he gets a heal. Pepinero picks up Airwalks. Meanwhile, flashes burn as Airwalks and Unlimited are down. Sword is going to follow. That is a clean three for none. They're looking for even more as Whirlip moves away. Young Buck, oh, they're going to be able to take him down. That's an ace. Unstoppable. That's they hit the ace. They're going to get the game. Another dragon, of course, on top of it. Forget the inhibitor turrets. We're going straight for the Nexus, boys. They've only got one more to clear, and I can't believe it because Giants Gaming have made this playoff race continue. And that was one of the best games we've seen Giants play. There was no real problems once they got into that mid game. Laning phase, slow down, nothing really happened. They got caught out a few times when they tried to split up here and like go for this 1 3 1 setup. But as soon as they got into these dragons, they were the ones who had the right wards down. They got to tell what every single time from Whirly. And that won them so many fights. Oh, yes. Where was this giant squad all split? They've put themselves in a good position to still be able to fight for their LCS lives. Yes, you have to down. be. You have to be relieved in that, yeah. in that situation. And you can see the smiles on their faces, but where was this team all split long? Well, it's been a thing for Giants. It's You're kind of rolling the dice, and you see, oh, did we, did we make the right call right there? Yes, we did. Then suddenly they do well. And other times they, you know, don't really seem to be on the same page. Obviously, Copenhagen Bulls, this means if elements win, they will be tied, and they're going to play each other. Winner gets into the playoffs. Loser sits at number seven and just basically has a safe spot. No relegation, no playoffs, just ready for next season. So it's not the end of the world. You can tell they're a bit disappointed, but, you know, obviously words of encouragement there from Dentist. It's, it's still in their hands. It's definitely not, yeah, it's definitely not out of their hands at this point. They still are able to, at the very least, play another game to try yes, and get themselves exactly. in the playoffs. But meanwhile, Elements, they got to be popping the champagne because oh, oh, they oh. still have a chance to get in. Maybe not a yet. Chance. You got to wait until later. They have a chance, but they are playing Fnatic. Yes, that's true. So it's going to not be the easiest prospect. It's not going to be an easy game. Despite Fnatic not playing for anything because they already locked this number two, they're not going to walk in and just, you know, take it easy. No, they still want to win. So Elements now suddenly have a chance to tie the Wolves and, of course, Giants against MYM here. We might have to see it later in the tiebreak if MYM beats Rocket. We might have to see. Now, quick shots on stage. Let's head up to talk to the saviors of El